Well, let's go back to our discussion. Um, let me turn to this one, actually. Let's go back to our discussion. One thing I did want to ask you, Mina, you mentioned the Medvedev uh, Historical Commission, or Truth Commission, whatever you call it, and these three subjects that they covered. Now, did they give a verdict on them? Did they give an opinion? Did they give some legally binding interpretation? Uh, and what consequences are there if one contradicts their rulings, their opinions? You know what I mean? What, what does this commission actually amount to, other than a, something that gives out official state opinion? Well, it was when the commission started, the, uh, the, the charge was to investigate uh, history further uh, and uh, protect the Russian image, so, so to speak. Uh, and uh, originally, it seemed, I mean, actually, it still seems a very dangerous thing because then it would go back to the narratives and interpretations of history. Uh, but um, uh, I think the Katini re reinterpretation may very well came out of those investigations uh, and uh, um, turned out to be different from, uh, from, the, from the expectations uh, that uh, they originally was done. But we'll, so I, I mean, my suggestion, and I, I don't know, maybe other panelists would step in because all of you talked about this as well, is that um, the Russian feeling about itself in the May of 2009 is enti was entirely different from Russian feeling about itself in October and November 2009, and even more different, obviously, in the May 2010. Um, and uh, um, I think one of the dangers is that depending on how we feel, we interpret history. And I think that's what the, the power of truth comes in, is that uh, facts should not require any interpretation. They're facts. But um, I don't know, maybe you can talk about this, because you mentioned it in your talk. Just a very quick No, actually, there's a big interview uh, with Mr. Medvedev and his guest here this morning. And he said, um, he's, you know, it's just the journalist who's interviewing him, that I remind you that a year ago I created this commission, the one you were talking about, on, on the falsifications of history. And one of the falsification of history was the, the claim that the Germans were behind Katyn. So this is why I took the decision to publish documents. So there are no more debates about this uh, because there's still, you know, many communists in, in the Russian Parliament are still uh, they're indignant about this. They're still maintaining that these are the Germans you know, who did it, even though there are documents now available and published. So uh, this is a, this is just a quick note to, to what you were saying about this, this commission. Well, can I have some? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I think for, for, for those who are in Russia, I, uh, I downloaded a copy of the Commission statute with a list of all the participants, of whom only two are historians, and virtually all the rest are security people. Uh, and, and it has a very cumbersome title, which I don't remember, but, but you can download it and print it. It's, it's quite interesting. I should also add that the American Historical Association has sent a letter of protest to President Vidic's office um, and if you know about the AHA, you know it's one of the more, well, how to put it politically, um, one of the more correct organizations in this country, uh, which once published an article which equated a Nebraska mining camp to the Gulag, but be that as it may. Uh, but even they have uh, published, uh, a, 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 and I'm a member of AHA, I should add, uh, they, should, uh, they have issued a formal letter of protest uh, revealing the dangers of such a commission for free inquiry and so on. So it, it's on the radar <coughs> even uh, among American academics. Well, before we run out of time, uh, Janusz, I just want to thank you and CSIS for uh, hosting this uh, very important discussion. Um, Somebody asked me why is it that we were interested in sponsoring uh, this discussion or helping to co-sponsor. And I'll give two reasons. One, I think it's imperative that we honor and pay respect to the victims that seem to be forgotten. Um, and I asked Edmonds a little bit about the role of the West um, and some of this, and perhaps we could have a panel discussion on, on that as well. Um, I'd like to underline that we're talking about the victims of communism and the Soviet regime. We are not talking about the Russian regime. Um, and I'm sort of interested on um, some of our Russian colleagues talking about uh, the writing of history uh, depending on how the Russians feel on a particular time. 
Uh, do I interpret that to mean, uh, do they feel themselves as uh, moving towards democracy? Um, or uh, are they being nostalgic about uh, the old ways uh, of communism? Um, but secondly, too, um, there's a piece uh, written by Paul Goebel uh, where it says, non-Russian falsif falsifying World War II to block integration of post-Soviet space, uh, a Moscow writer says. Um, it's Mr. Shishkin. And he says that if this uh, falsification of uh, World War II by non-Russian continues, that it will, quote, inevitably be, uh, be formed around the borders of Russia, a belt of hostile states that he says is in direct threat to the security of Russia and all peoples of the post-Soviet space. The second reason I thought that this was important to do is precisely to improve relations between the peoples uh, of this space. And I, uh, as a member of the U.S.-Ukraine Foundation, fully recognize that uh, Ukraine can't move, and therefore uh, improving relations between Ukraine and Russia is important. And when I asked Mr. Bukowski that, uh, when I had a chance to visit with him some months ago, I said, how do you improve relations between Ukraine and Russia? And his answer was first, you have to begin with the truth. And he also reminded me that when Ukraine first became independent, uh, that the people of Russia were very normal about it. There was no opposition, there was no fear, Ukraine was not viewed as a threat. Uh, as in, and in fact, he reminded me that he uh, spoke to the Ukrainian parliament Rada, in September of 90, after uh, President Bush gave his Chicken Kiev speech, where Mr. Bukowski assured uh, the Ukrainians that it would be all right if they decided to separate from the Soviet Union. So again, uh, in the spirit uh, th this discussion is also the spirit of improving relations between the peoples uh, of this area and to recognize uh, that they were all victims of a system, the communist ideology. And it's unfortunate, from my perspective, that the current government of Russia seems to be insistent on defending that past regime. Um, so, thank you. Thank you. Vlad, from a Moldovan perspective. Hi. Uh, thank you very much, Janusz. Uh, uh, and, you know, I, I thank the panel that uh, they, uh, they put uh, uh, diff from different angles, they described uh, how they see the situation. And uh, so for the boss, everyone would understand better uh, how the historical facts are viewed from different perspectives and from different backgrounds. Uh, I would like to, to say that uh, although we discussed mostly the north, uh, northern uh, uh, eastern uh, flank, uh, we, Nadia and I, uh, will we have a southeastern perspective um, uh, about relations uh, between, uh, between our region uh, and the West and Russia. Um, and uh, I, I would like to add one, one point regarding uh, the many cartoons that are not spoken. Uh, we touched about uh, millions of victims in different countries, uh, and we spoke about cartoon, which was a horrific uh, event, uh, but uh, uh, I remember two years ago when I was uh, writing, uh, uh, co-authored the Historical Dictionary of Moldova, uh, encyclopedia type uh, book, uh, where we dealt with the next facts. Uh, from 1940 till uh, 1949, about 300,000, 500,000 estimates were killed by the uh, by the Soviet regime, uh, and uh, there, there are places all over the place in Moldova, but also in, in so many countries where 500 people were killed, or 1,000 people were killed. So I would call these mini cartoons everywhere in these places. And so we, we need to recognize these facts uh, and uh, understand better uh, through what people in this region came to. If you were a farmer in Moldova, today the Republic of Moldova, uh, in 1940, 
you had several external shocks that, that you, you had to go through during several, several years. First was 1940, after the Stalin Hitler attack, you were occupied by the Soviets overnight, and you were imposed the, the, not only the deportations, killings, but also the, the uh, a different uh, regime. You were overnight need to speak Russian. Overnight you need to change your alphabet from the Latin to, to Russian and uh, to, to be recruited in the Soviet army. And in one year, in 1941, uh, the, the Germans and the Romanian army came in. And they also were recruiting. And suddenly, you were uh, one member of the, your family were in the Soviet army, and another member of your family were, were in the Romanian army. Uh, in 1944, things changed. Uh, the Soviet, Soviet uh, troops uh, liberated by the German. Uh, and uh, you found yourself uh, occupied by the Soviets because, as the, again, by, by, the, by the regime that followed in 1946 and 1947 by Fermin, which was very much close to what happened in Ukraine in 1933, uh, which uh, killed uh, a lot of people and went uh, as, as far as uh, getting cannibalism and, and things of this horrible nature. Uh, in 1949, two years later, after the famine, you got colonization, uh, and uh, the people who had 15 hectares or more uh, were in the in the blacklist of being deported uh, deported to to Siberia. And so uh, you you had a question about what about the rest of the people in living in the Soviet Union? You had three choices mainly. One is to oppose which happened in 1940, 1951 mostly, by a small group of people uh, fighting uh, with arms or boycotted the, the Soviet regime. Second larger group was going along with it, uh, leaving your land to be taken by the Soviets um, and, uh, and won your, your tools and, and so on. Uh, and the third is the third group that was also uh, present is to, to support the regime. And uh, when, when you say about blaming, I think most of the blame should go with those collaborators that supported the regime, and more importantly, were the tools of the regime by, uh, by, by uh, uh, being worse than, than, than the, the Russians that, uh, that were present. Uh, and uh, by looking into the facts, you see that uh, the worst crime were committed by, by the locals. And, and I think this is uh, why we need to, to look at the history and, uh, and come up with the terms of the historical facts that uh, uh, our people went, went through. Uh, and uh, the most important thing is to recognize these events and these facts, uh, which is a difficult one for, for many of these uh, groups and subgroups uh, in our countries, uh, but at the end to go to, to go along with these uh, 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 terms and, and build new relations. Um, and I think uh, this is uh, important for people both in Moldova, in Ukraine, in Baltic states, uh, to to um, and, and mainly in Russia to uh, understand the historical events and move along with. Uh, uh, with building new relations in the region because this is the interest of the people of Russia and the people of our region to, to build these relations and live in peace.